Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Re-Engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're continuing our look at the games of David Janowski with another balmy game, this time against Bal Saladin Leonhardt. Uh, I suppose that's uh, Lionheart, isn't it? Uh, maybe. Um, the, uh, the Wikipedia entry for, um, for Leonhardt is a little bit sad. It says that he's got, had a low profile and is largely forgotten and few tournament victories. But um, yeah, it also mentions that, um, you know, he was a, a fierce attacking player, um, won several brilliancy prizes and uh, yeah, beat a lot of the top players of that era. So uh, yeah, very interesting player in actual fact. Um, coming up against David Janowski, bound to be fireworks and there most certainly were. So let's have a look how that went. So E4, e5 knight c3 bishop c5 bishop c4 the vienna and um well the way that black plays it um Janowski manages to get an f4 and it looks actually just like a um a king's gambit declined where you go 2f4 bishop c5 um yeah a few uh, decent moves here i mean actually the engines uh, i suppose go to line really is knight c6 and then just taking and playing bishop e6 here just uh, getting rid of the um, of the light squared bishops, neutralizing that pressure, and uh, and you know black's perfectly fine basically. Um, I mean, I mentioned in a uh, in a previous video that um, uh, that somehow the, the the black players uh, of that era had a bit of a mania for uh, uh, for bringing the light squared bishop out early, and that's what uh, Leonhardt does. Again, it's not the the very best move, but um, it's not a bad move either. Um, so knight f three. Um, yeah, and now knight c6, and uh, here Janowski played a move that surprised me, but actually it's the engine's uh, top choice here. Um, it's actually the move knight a4, going after this uh, this bishop. Logical uh, move, of course, just feels weird somehow, where you've got pressure, you know, with the bishop on here, and you're playing a move like putting the knight on the rim like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, the idea basically is to grab the bishop, and then you can just castle kingside. Of course, if you get that, then it's absolutely fine. Well, um, Leonard uh, reacted in, um, in a pretty sharp way. Um, yeah, the engines were sort of felt that you just had to uh, accept this and play like this. But this is just very pleasant for, uh, for White, of course. I thoroughly understand Leonard's uh, reaction, which is to take on f3, take some knight d4. And there are quite a few King's Indian lines that look a bit similar to this. And uh, probably a little bit in analogy with that, uh, Janowski uh, didn't play uh, the quiet queen d1, just looking to... Uh, um, to defend c2 and play c3 and chase the knight away. He played queen g3, hitting the pawn on g7 and giving black the, uh, the opportunity to take that rook. And this being a, uh, uh, a game from the, the classical era, of course black played knight takes c2. Um, I think probably in the modern era, uh, castles would be played. And actually there's a, well, there's a few difficult things for, um, for uh, white here. Um, b5 is, uh, is one of the threats, and of course knight c2 takes a1. Um, bishop b3 was uh, the engine uh, lines, but uh, yeah, these were just looking quite nice for, uh, for black, really. Knight, H, knight h5, followed by taking on f4. Black's just got a very nice position. But okay, knight takes c2 was played, king d1, and then knight takes a1. Um, Funnily enough, knight h5 could have been thrown in as an intermediate move, just defending uh, the pawn on g7 and uh, hitting the queen on g3. And after queen h3, we go knight a1 now and then castles. Um, these are very hard positions to assess with the, um, uh, the knight on a1 like that. But, um, well, you know, the engines were sort of feeling that, uh, you know, white would always manage somehow to, um, black rather would always manage somehow to, um, uh, to free the knight. You know, also because there's a loose one on here, for example, and we've got some sort of possibility of, uh, of a fork like this. So, um, yeah. Also, you know, the bishop can come to d4 and it's not easy to get at the knight on a1, even though it's trapped in the corner. But uh, this would have been pretty interesting as well, quite sharp. But knight a1 was played. Queen g7, but here now was a very crucial moment for black. Um, because uh, Leonard played uh, rook f8, very natural to cover f7 and, uh, um, and also, you know, protect the rook. But uh, actually, uh, queen d7 was, um, was the, uh, the very best move for, um, for black. And uh, it's a very clever move. I mean, it's covering f7. It's attacking the knight on a4, of course. But it's also threatening a move like queen g4 to exchange off the queens. That's the, uh, the really nasty bit. I mean, actually, if you go queen takes and queen takes a8, oops, sorry, queen takes a8, 
just taking both rooks, then queen g4 check is going to be very, very unpleasant uh, for, uh, for white. It, it, the king can't escape to the queen side because the knight uh, stops it. And we're just coming in with queen g2 afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, white's in, uh, in big trouble there. So actually the best move is queen g7, queen takes a4, b3, queen a2, check, king uh, d8. And then, well, we've just got perpetual whenever we want it, really, with, um, with white. And, um, well, there was a, a game, a few games where uh, the engines just played this line out. Knight takes e4, threatening queen d2, uh, checkmate, takes, check, king e2, queen there, and uh, this is just uh, perpetual. So queen d7 was the, uh, was the brilliant resource. Sacrifice of two rooks, uh, which white can't accept. Well, can accept one of them, but not both. But Leonard played rook f8, and here Janowski made a, a big mistake. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, the best move simply was to take on um, on c5 here. And if d, then we're going uh, f takes c5. And uh, well, basically, we're getting you know all of the uh, uh, advantages of uh, what you know the, the white could have. But um, yeah, just making sure that we don't have a, a loose knight hanging around on a4. Basically, that's the uh, the big thing. This is uh, pretty strong. The engines after knight c5 wanted to play just knight h5. Queen g4, knight f4, which is getting a bit uh, crazy. But white plays uh, g3 in this position. And, uh, well, I mean, it, you know, it's a, it's a mess, of course. But, you know, this knight on a1 is going to be a, a bit of a problem in the long run. And, uh, well, the black king's not exactly safe either. If the knight moves away, we get stuff like bishop g5, for example, as well. So um, f takes c5 was played. And now uh, knight h5 was played. Not a bad move. Uh, but actually, bishop d4 is what the engines want. That's a really clever move. You know, just sidestepping now, uh, uh, moving out of the range of the knight and basically just leaving that knight hanging in the air. And um, also protecting the, the king's side, but also protecting the knight on a1. So, you know, you can't go b3, bishop b2. The, the bishop on d4 is covering that. And um, still a total mess. For example, bishop h6, knight d7, rook f1. Yeah, d5 takes queen e7 is, uh, is what the engines were looking at. And, uh, well, I mean, you're just going to play knight e5 and castle queenside, and it's just going to be a, a little bit tricky for, um, for white, basically. You know, it's, um, uh, yeah, a mess still, but, uh, but you're sort of looking at this bishop on d4, seeing that knight on a4, and you say, ah, should have exchanged it, should have exchanged it, really. Well, Leonard played uh, knight h5. We got queen g4, and now queen d7. And uh, actually, the best move for uh, for White was to uh, to take off, to take the bishop again, phew, and then go something like rook f1, and then we're just going to develop the bishop somewhere, and then try and grab this uh, this knight, or maybe with king d2 and rook a, rook a1. Um, and um, yeah, the engine thought that this was uh, this was going to end up about equal, really. You know, the the knight comes round to g7, e6 to d4, uh, just uh, gets a good uh, uh, space there, and uh, yeah, it's sort of. Uh, sort of balance somehow but uh, Janowski just uh, didn't really care about um, going for that sort of thing he went for e6 so just sacrificing this um, uh, this uh, um, knight on a4 giving it away uh, and just going for some tempi basically and uh, and hoping for stuff like ef and uh, and queen e6 and uh, you know it is pretty dangerous it must be said um, but uh, however, if you're facing an engine, then uh, the engines will not be too afraid. So the best move for black, or a very good move in any case, was queen takes a2. And after ef, rook f7, well, we take and go king e7. Sidestep like that. It's quite similar to the game in actual fact. You know, um, uh, black's threatening stuff like queen c2. You know, it's just really 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 dangerous this basically you know and uh, it's just not you're just not really going to be able to uh, to do too much with uh, with white there um yeah the engines were just looking to block basically but uh here you've got check check and what were they doing uh, what were they doing oh no king f2 that's right uh, and check here then just preparing to play the rook to f8 and uh, and grab this bishop in that way as well so very um uh yeah Messy, but not really that good. But knight f6 was played by Leonard. It's uh, really quite amazing. You can see, uh, you really have the feeling that both players were going all out, basically, either to sacrifice or to do crazy intermezzos. You know, uh, it's never it's never all about uh, just uh, straightforward attacking. There's always uh, these little uh, intermediate moves that are coming in. So ef, rook f7, 
Uh, Bishop takes f7 check from um, from uh, Janowski. Um, yeah, I mean the engines were were, were kind of looking at uh, at other stuff here. They were looking at uh, playing queen e6 check. Rook e7 takes and takes, and uh, we're basically trying to trying to somehow pick up this knight on uh, on a1. But again, I think you know uh, Janowski was kind of launched here. He wasn't going to do that. He went bishop takes f7 check, king f7, and rook f1. And um, well. In all fairness, you're, you're two pieces down here, really, which is um, not such good news. However, um, the black queen is on prize, and you've got ideas like bishop b2, bishop g5, rook takes f6 even. You know, all of them are quite dangerous. And, uh, well, the chances of a, of a perpetual are quite high, you know. Um, and, uh, well, there's even uh, chances for, uh, for mating, basically. So, yeah, you know, it's not... Uh, not uh, hopeless, but yeah, Leonard played a move like Queen D4, and I could have imagined, I could imagine that when he played this move, he just sort of thought, right, and now completely winning. You know, two pieces up. Um, I'm covering all the threats. Queen takes D3. It's finished. Um, but Janowski played this move Queen E2, which is quite cunning, and uh, it defends the the pawn on D3, and actually pr uh, intends Bishop B2, threatening. You know, eventually Rook takes F6, and there's also Bishop G5 in the air. So. Yeah, it's one of those uh, moments in a game where you often get a bit shocked somehow. Eh? You you sort of um, uh, you sort of think, and now it's finished, and then the opponent finds uh, you know a new way to breathe some life into stuff. And uh, here, yeah, Leonard played a, a, again a brilliant move, um, only maybe just a little bit too much uh, somehow. Um, yeah, it gives a wider chance in any case to, to equalise at least. Um, the best move according to the engine was Queen E5. And the idea is that you stop both Bishop G5 and Bishop B2 because you can meet it with Bishop D4. So, um, yeah, the engines were looking at this line. Bishop B2, Bishop D4, Rook F5. And then the engines were sacrificing the Queen like that. And, well, you know, this is pretty, this is pretty good really for, um, for, uh, for Black. I mean, you know, three pieces a bit tough. Well, it does have this resource D4 because if bishop here I can go check and pick up the bishop and then the knight afterwards the knight afterwards um but black plays bishop h2 queen f2 rook g8 and yeah I mean probably white will manage somehow to get one piece back but by that time black will have taken quite a few pawns and have rook and two pieces for um you know for the queen it's just not enough for uh, for white so queen e5 would have been a, a good move but needs a little bit of calculation what uh, Leonard did was rook g8 um yeah quite amazing idea the idea is after bishop b2 his idea was to go rook takes g2 and uh yeah obviously queen takes g2 queen d3 is uh very much what he uh what he wants there um but we've got bishop d4 rook takes e2 and rook f6 check um and uh here um unfortunately at this moment uh, leonard uh, made a, a massive blunder here um to be honest, it's not so so easy. I mean, king g8, king e2, bishop d4 is apparently equal according to the engines because uh, we've got two pieces for the um, for the uh, for the rook, um, and um, and actually um, this knight can escape. I mean, the funny thing is that the engines say c5 definitely is a, is an easy move and uh, just a draw, so not even bothering. But you could actually even just escape with a knight there uh, and take here and. Uh, you know, this should be a draw somehow, you know, this uh, this sort of position. Uh, you can kind of keep your um, your queenside pawn safe and two pieces for the rook is fine. But I can imagine that you'd be a little bit nervous about it. I mean, you know, with your king on the back rank and uh, and all that sort of stuff, you know, it's not, uh, not um, yeah, definitely definitely losable, this uh, this sort of thing. Um, yeah, Leonard tried, tried to improve it somehow. He played the move king g7, basically trying to... Um, um, trying to keep his king on the second rank and not give white the opportunity to um uh you know to to invade like that but um uh this unfortunately allowed this idea rook takes d6 discovered check we go bishop d4 which sounds great rook is on pre so sounds great but no rook d7 check i think uh, leonard had uh, missed this intermediate move and after king f6 we go king e2 and ah, this is a real problem i mean uh, the bishop is hanging and this rook is just attacking all of Black's pawns, and of course the knight is still trapped on a1. So after bishop b5, d4 happened, bishop h2, rook h7 with tempo, hitting the bishop. And after bishop f4, now Janowski just played king d3, 
Um, stopping the knight from coming out to c2, and uh, well, something like e5 is being threatened, and then eventually king e4, d5. So, um, um, yeah, Leonard played c5, but after d takes c5, he resigned. You know, white's just going to grab all those pawns, and this knight is still stuck in the corner. So there we are, absolutely crazy game from uh, two, uh, you know, all-out attacking players, really. Um, pretty impressed with Yanovsky's knight a4, which, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just, uh, yeah, you're never going to get a player of that era refusing to, uh, to sacrifice a rook like that, especially not a player like uh, Yanovsky. It was a very, very, very interesting game and some lovely variations there. This, um, this double uh, rook sacrifice, I'm not sure I've ever seen that one in the, uh, in the notes uh, given, and... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the rest of the game was just crazy. I mean, uh, sacrificing uh, just, uh, you know, two pieces like this just for, for the attack. Um, and yeah, this incredibly ingenious idea of Leonard that, uh, that well, fails at the end with this uh, little tactical miscalculation. Just, uh, yeah, you know, really, uh, really crazy game. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, not one of the biggest, uh, biggest uh, tournament games or anything you'd ever seen. But, uh, you know, these sort of games were played quite regularly in, uh, in this era. And it's great fun to watch. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you liked it, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new book, Reengineering the Chess Classics. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.